with roughly one year to go until the game launches, I think it's time we talk about it again. Hey everyone, what is going on? My Red Archer Live and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are breaking down everything that we know so far about Payday 3. It's long overdue, there is a lot of stuff to talk about that was not in the last version of this video that I put up last year. There's so much more to break down and so in this video, I'm going to give you the most comprehensive, detailed and informative version of the video to this date. I'm going to go through story, characters, platforms, release dates, everything you could possibly imagine that we already know about the next Payday game is going to be in this video. So it's a big one and I hope you're excited to get into it. If you are excited for Payday 3, make sure you drop a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to the channel if you are new to keep up to date with all future Payday content. I'm really keen to push this channel back on the algorithm. We've had a little bit of an issue recently with getting some of the videos on the algorithm. YouTube's just very finicky. We all know this by now. If you do leave a like and you hit subscribe and leave a comment about what you're looking for in Payday 3, it will help push the video out in the algorithm and get more people involved and it would mean the world to me. But anyway, enough teasing from me, let's get right to this video and start off by rolling the intro. So as always, what I'm going to do in this video is break it down into categories, and there are a bunch of different categories to talk about this time around. We're going to go through the story of the game, the characters, the heists, the music, the game engine, the publisher, the platforms, the payment model and DLC plan, and finally, the release date. A lot of stuff, I'm sure you can see. So we're going to break it down step by step and talk about everything we know in each of these chapters. So let's start off first with the story. A lot of you might be wondering as to how Payday 3 is going to work from a lore perspective. When is the game set? How does it connect to Payday 2 and Payday the Heist? Well, here's what we know so far. The Payday 2 secret ending where the entire gang retire and end up on a beach watching the president's speech that you might have seen in the offshore Payday cutscene that came out roughly three or four years ago. That's the canon ending. That is the way the game has actually ended. So Bane has transferred his consciousness into the body of the president and is now basically ruling over America. Greatest heist of all and all that. So he's out of the picture and the Payday gang have retired. But unfortunately, for them unfortunately for us they don't quite stay that way because someone from their life of crime in the Washington DC era pulls the payday gang back into the world of heisting they don't want to come back but someone draws them back in it's kind of like a John Wick kind of thing where someone's pulling them back out of retirement and making them do something against their will the game will be set in New York City in 2023 10 years on from their first return to Washington DC when payday 2 first released the story could expand beyond New York City overkill have made that quite clear but the focus is going to be in NYC for all of payday 3 launch so everything you do in there is going to be based in the hub world of New York City whatever heist it is wherever your safe house might be it's all going to be very New York City centric Another big question is who is actually going to be in Payday 3? What characters will we see come back? Well, we have had the confirmation of four so far. Overkill have teased via two different pieces of concept art in 2021 that Dallas, Chains, Hoxton and Wolf will all be returning in Payday 3. They will be our OG4 once again. As such, knowing how most of the voice cast are very willing to come back to the game, in particular Pete Gold I've spoken to who voices Hoxton, Damien Poitier voices Chains, they all want to come back and play their characters again. So it's safe to say that the returning voice talents will come back in Payday three bar Ulf Anderson. I'm going to be citing a lot of different things in this video to refer to different bits of information from Overkill and one of them I will refer to is a recent AMA that was done by Overkill in Payday subreddit and one of the questions that was asked is whether Ulf Anderson slash Simon Vicklin will be returning in their respective roles doing the music or the voice acting from Payday 2 and in a very vague response Almir confirmed that because Simon and Ulf are doing their own thing they're not really tied to Payday anymore so when I get to music we'll talk about Simon Vicklin's involvement but as of right here right now I don't see Ulf Anderson coming back. He's too busy with 10 chambers, he's working on GTA with all of that company, I don't see him coming back to voice Wolf since he hung up that mask about seven years ago. So as far as I'm concerned, Ulf Anderson will not be voicing Wolf, Wolf will be recast, but Dallas, Chains and Hoxton should all have the same returning voice talent. That's how it seems so far. But will those be the only four characters? Well, it's actually hard to say. I'm of a mind that they might do some kind of pre-order bonus DLC character. It's the kind of thing a lot of games do these days when you've got multiple characters, so I kind of see that coming. But a response from Elizabeth has confirmed on the subreddit that they're not ready to reveal any additional characters quite yet, which suggests they are obviously thinking about more characters. That makes sense. They're not going to have Payday 3 permanently with just four characters, but we don't know if that means there'll be more than four at launch, if there might be some bonus ones ones as pre-order DLC or some launch day DLC or if they'll just release at some point in the game's future life cycle. We just don't know when or where but I have got some ideas and I did share them in a video that I'll put on screen now talking about which characters could return in Payday 3. If you want to have a look at that I'll leave a link in the top right corner of the screen and I'll link it in the description down below. Feel free to go check it out and see who I think are the most likely returning characters.
characters. Aside from playable characters though, there is also the argument of which supporting characters could come back because we've got our contractors, we've got our people that talk us through the heist, like Locke. As I've said, Bane probably isn't going to be coming back, he's too busy being the president now, and that also kind of releases Simon Vickland from his role as Bane, which during an interview I conducted with him last year, he noted that he was quite glad to be leaving behind. He'd done Bane for a really long time, he was ready to move on, he never wants to be a voice actor, he only took on the role of Bane for budgetary reasons to make the game cheaper to make for Overkill. I mean, I've done it for such a long time, I never really enjoyed it. Like, as I said, it was a more of a production, you know, cost <laughs> sort of element to the fact that I was cast more than me wanting to do it or, or being really apt uh, you know, for for the job. So I don't imagine Bane will come back at all. If he does, it'll be the presidential role and no doubt played by somebody else. Maybe the same actor who played him during the offshore payday cutscene. We don't know. But I do think there's a decent likelihood Locke could come back. He's become a real fan favourite talking the gang through all the heists in Payday 2. I wouldn't see there being a reason to stop him from coming back in Payday 3 unless they write him out for some reason, which I don't see why they would. And I also don't see why they should. Locke is such an integral part of the game. I would like to see him come back in some capacity. Even if he's not the exact same role and he's talking us through everything, Every heist, he could at least be a contractor, he could be some kind of old friend that manages the safe house or something. There's definitely a way they could work it, I know there is, and I would like to see him come back. And as for other contractors, well, some of them are dead, some of them are still working with the Payday gang. I think Vlad could quite easily come back if he wanted to. He said during the offshore Payday clip that if the Payday gang was out, he was out too. So what happens if they come out of retirement? Beyond that, it would just be speculation. I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, I think the elephant could or couldn't come back. We just don't know, realistically. But the doors are open for them, so there's no saying they couldn't. Just bear in mind that Payday 3 has to have its own unique characters so that it can stand on its own two feet without just having classic characters come back and override all the new characters that they're trying to add into the game. There's definitely a balance to be achieved, and I trust Overkill can get that right. With the game still being a small ways off and us not having any gameplay yet, there's not too much we can talk about in the heist field, but we have got some general information that was provided by Payday 3's game director Eric Wannavie during the Payday 10th anniversary livestream in October of 2021. Eric discussed during that stream that the gang have been gone for long enough for the world to have changed and for how they heist to need to adapt to suit the current times. And as such, he's really put an emphasis on the use of the digital age, quoting four different things that will play a part in upcoming gameplay. First off, software giants, then we've got cryptocurrency, mass surveillance and also the dark web. So all four of those prongs will feature in some way, shape or form, either in the heists or the way we play those heists. Gadget upgrades and changes will also reflect this and as such provide new opportunities. So you can tell that there's going to be some changes to gameplay here while they'll still have the authentic heist feel that we want Payday to have. It's going to be moving with the times. It's going to be set in present day. You need to adapt to that digital component into it a bit more than you might have done in Payday 2. But if that's not quite enough for you, there is also some concept art available that gives you a bit more of a feel of the kind of thing we might be doing in Payday 3, and the concept art concerns a bank job on the Golden Shark Incorporated Bank. As you can see from the concept art, we've got a before and after, with the gang preparing to start their heist to rob the bank, and then the gang being in the middle of it, in the loud version, judging from the police response and the flurry of bullets. It's not too much, but it does give you a little flavour that we are going to have that loud heisting action, and presumably also a stealth angle, although we've not got concept art to show that just yet. The only thing beyond that we can talk about is what heists will return from previous Payday games. As a lot of you no doubt know, all of the heists from the first game, Payday the Heist, are now playable in Payday 2. So the question arises, which heist from Payday 2 will then be playable in Payday 3? It's another thing that I've done a video on, so feel free to go and check it out. Link is on screen and in the description yet again, talking about all the heists I think are more likely to come back as returning or classic jobs. But the only thing we have in an official response from Overkill is during the AMA, someone asked if we were going to see any classic maps like Bank Heist remastered in Payday 3, and Elizabeth said, check out the game on release to find out, which is the most cryptic way of saying, yes, there will be classic heists, which I think we can all expect there's going to be at least some returning jobs and again who knows maybe one of them will be like a pre-order bonus or something and you can buy it separately there's some kind of mechanic here that could be going for pre-order and bonus dlc characters or maps that could be the way they do it we just don't know but i would imagine in the base game you'll probably have a couple of returning maps and if we don't they'll come quite soon after as post-launch content it just seems really feasible to me <laughs> There's not very much to say here, but let's talk very briefly about the music. Who's going to be composing the soundtrack for Payday 3? Well, as I discussed earlier, Simon Vickland and Ulf Anderson are pretty much off the cards here. They're busy working with Ten Chambers, they're working on GTFO, Simon's off doing his own thing there. However, we do have some information in the form of current Payday 2 composer Gustavo Cuccimio. During an interview I conducted with him in 2020, I asked him if he knew anything about Payday 3, and, well, here's what he had to say. So, my question to you, quite simply, do you know anything about it? And to follow on, because I know, I'm pretty sure I know what the answer will be to that. Would you like to be a part of it? Well, do I know about it? Yes, I do know stuff about it. I don't know that much about it. 
but uh, I can't really talk about. Let me rephrase. Yeah. Do you know much more than what the public know? Okay, I'll answer we, the question. No, no, no. Can we take no, some don't time say here? Don't say off, anything. Off, that off, says off. enough. It's fine. It's fine. I won't ask you to answer now. That, that sums it up for me. So Gustavo clearly knows something, and I think the door is open for him to come back and do some composition for Payday 3 should he want to. And I'm not going to lie, I'm more than happy with that. Simon Vickland has done some absolutely fantastic music, and we can all agree that some of the best tracks in Payday 2 are definitely from his mind. But I've got to be honest with you, Gustavo has done some absolutely fantastic music for both the Silk Road and City of Gold campaigns. Dead Eye in particular has become one of my favourite tracks in the whole game. But honestly, if anyone can carry it on the way that Simon's done it, I think Gustavo could quite easily do that, and I'd be very interested to see if he does get asked back for Payday 3. I'm pretty sure we all know this by this point, but to call Payday 2's engine, also known as Diesel, archaic, is putting it mildly. The diesel engine is a piece of garbage. It can't run properly. It's really difficult to optimize the amount of content on Payday 2 that it has now on PC. And it also is one of the main culprits for not being able to get content out on consoles because you can't just port stuff over. Diesel's not that kind of engine. You have to build everything from the ground up on platforms that you want to work it on. There's very little ability to port things beyond core framework. We're all sick and tired of the diesel engine by this point and the jokes that people make out of it. We're all ready to move on to something bigger and better. And that's where Payday 3 comes into it. Payday 3 is currently being built on Unreal Engine 4. Game director Eric Wanovy has talked about how using Unreal Engine 4 is giving them more muscle under the hood and allowing them to push that heist fantasy as far as possible, creating a living, breathing environment and seeing it react to things you do in the game. And as such, it will allow for content to be very easily built for PC or consoles and ported very easily and seamlessly between the two. We'll have a more console-centric discussion a little bit later in the video, but all you need to know basically is that they've got an engine perfect for developing console content at the same time as PC and making sure that all platforms stay up to date at the same time. Good news for everyone. Interestingly enough, they're not actually using Unreal Engine 5 for the construction of the game at the minute, despite that engine already having been released. Elizabeth cited that their technical department is looking into the feasibility of both options and that they'll see where they end up once they finish that investigation. But the game's already been in actual full development since October 2019, so they've been building it on Unreal Engine 4 now for two and a half years. And from what I've read up and been told by friends who have more of a knowledge of game engines, it is relatively easy to take everything you've built in Unreal Engine 4 and push it into Unreal Engine 5. I don't know whether it makes a huge difference to how the game will run in the end it might be just that there's more power under the hood to be able to develop things which in itself might be enough of a reason to transfer the stuff into unreal engine 5 but maybe overkill are concerned that they might have some unintended bugs or issues if they put the content over i don't know the point being the game is being built in unreal engine and it's an engine that runs far better than diesel for those of you who don't know the difference between the game developer and the publisher, the game developer is the company that makes the game from scratch. They build it up on their engine and they build a product to be released to the general public. The publisher is a company that either has a bit of a hand in the development or usually mainly has an influence over the game and helps decide where the project actually goes, helps market it and helps get more people purchasing the game and playing it at any one time. In return, that publisher puts some investment into the game to help fund it and gets some equity back when the game actually starts selling. So it's all a balance between funding and control over the project, so how much funding they provide can often dictate how much control they have over a project. With Payday 3, Overkill and Starbreeze have constructed a co-publishing deal with Koch Media. There is a better pronunciation for it, but I don't want YouTube to think that I'm swearing. I'm trying to stay clean on here. And typically, while publishing deals normally mean that the publisher gets the only say in where the game goes, a co-publishing deal means that both the developer and the publisher get to have a back and forth as to where the game is going to release. So Overkill get a say as to where Payday 3 will release. Doesn't mean that they have veto rights, but it means they get to voice their concerns and that Koch Media have to listen to them attentively, which is something that Overkill need to make the most of because there's obviously an issue right now with the whole Epic Game Store scenario, something I'll get into in just a minute. And I think Overkill needs to do their best to make sure Payday 3 does not get wrapped up inside of that. But why am I mentioning the publisher? Well, the main point is that Koch Media have put a lot of money into Payday 3's development. Millions upon millions have been pushed into the game's development from Koch media to make sure Payday 3 is the ultimate heisting experience and hopefully it means that the finished product that we get on launch will be the best Payday experience to date. Let's get into a heavy one. Let's talk about platforms for Payday 3. What platforms will Payday 3 release on? Let's start there. Well, right from the very get-go, Payday 3 has been announced to be releasing on PC and consoles. Beyond that, it's a bit of a grey area because no specific platforms have been mentioned reliably at any one point of time. In a company presentation in 2020, Starbreeze cited a release on Steam, Xbox and PlayStation using their logo graphics as an indication. But that very same page in a company presentation in 2021 has had that whole panel replaced by them talking about the games as a service model, something we'll talk about in the next chapter. This could be purely coincidental and it might just be that in the presentation they want to talk about different things this time around, but it also might not be. It might be that they don't actually know specifically what consoles they want to rely on, 
and also what PC platform they might be releasing on. But I can't talk about PC and consoles at the same time, so let's talk about consoles first. I think personally the game will be releasing on Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. It's already been a couple of years since those consoles released and more and more you're seeing Xbox One and PlayStation 4 be dropped off the radar in development or if it is being included in games development, the game versions are not looking as good. It's the same thing that happened when the Xbox One came out and you start to see a difference between Xbox 360 and Xbox One titles. The biggest example of which being how Call of Duty titles evolved between Ghosts of Advanced Warfare and Black Ops 3. You could tell quite quickly the technology was moving far beyond what the past consoles could handle and that's why not long after they got dropped. I think we're already at a point in the development of the game where whatever they're building is going to be best pursued and best powered by the Xbox Series X and PS5 and the Xbox One and PS4 just ain't going to be able to handle that. So my personal prediction, and I could be wrong obviously, but I think it's just going to be current gen consoles. I don't see Xbox One and PS4 getting the game. That is just me personally. The only other console to mention is the Switch and to be honest after the way Payday 2 was launched on there, I'd be hesitant to say that they'll release anything for that anytime soon. Overkill don't have experience building things on Nintendo Switch. The Switch version of Payday 2 was outsourced to a different company to build. It was done as a cash grab and it's a whole thing that we've talked about in previous videos years ago and it's also why Overkill was completely inequipped to actually update the game and why Payday 2 on Switch never saw a single update past launch. So for me, as far as consoles go, I would say just Series X and PS5. I don't imagine Xbox One, PS4, or Nintendo Switch will see this game release in 2023. But let's talk about PC. Now, there are obviously two big stores that a lot of you are familiar with and know about by now. There is Steam, and there is the Epic Games Store. Both of these stores have got advantages over disadvantages. No matter what anyone else tells you, there are good things to Epic Games Store that Steam doesn't have, and vice versa. But we can all agree that Steam is the vastly superior PC platform. We all know this, but the issue arises when you know that Koch Media has a very, very deep favoritism towards the Epic Games Store because that company takes far less revenue cut from games sold on the platform. Steam takes 30% of all game revenue, whereas the Epic Games Store only takes 12%. I'm not going to go into too much more detail because I explained it in a full-on video essay for the Epic Games Store debacle. I would definitely recommend you go and watch that. The only mistake in it is that I say that Koch Media have the only say in publishing the game. They don't. Overkill get a say, as I've already mentioned. And that's where that comes into it. Overkill are well aware that Steam is the biggest platform for Payday 2. It's also got the biggest Steam community in existence. The Payday 2 Steam community is nearly 8 million players strong, which is far more than double the size of the communities for the second and third place games combined. Payday 2 is so Steam centric, it's unbelievable. And because of that, I can't imagine they would allow it to be moved over to the Epic Game Store, especially when Overkill get a say. Koch Media might try and tease and beg to get it on the Epic Game Store, but Overkill get a say. The simple question is how much do they get? And I just don't know the answer to that. But that's not quite all. There's actually something else to talk about very briefly when it comes to platforms, and that is crossplay. About half a year ago, Starbreeze launched a platform called Starbreeze Accounts. So you make an account on there and it basically connects to any Starbreeze titles releasing going forward. There's going to be Payday 3, obviously, and something I've noticed on some of their company presentations is Starbreeze are considering expanding again, bringing in more IPs both to develop and to publish to make Starbreeze Studios the Swedish giant that it was several years ago before its financial issues. Point being, if you look at the description for Starbreeze Accounts and the benefits it provides, it lists five things you can see on screen now. Cloud save functionality, community competitions and giveaways, loyalty rewards, additional player benefits announced as the product develops, and finally, not in the list, but I left it till last for dramatic effect, crossplay. All bets are off because we don't have official confirmation, but I firmly believe that crossplay is with Payday 3 in mind. The game is being built on an engine where you can quite easily port content between platforms, and what is the biggest game that uses Unreal Engine that has crossplay? Oh yeah. Fortnite. Fortnite's got crossplay. It's built on Unreal Engine. There's no argument that Payday 3 couldn't have the exact same thing. Build it on Unreal, have all the content updated on all platforms at the same time, because it's dead easy to port it from one platform to the other, and on top of that, allow console and PC players to play together. Make the Payday community as united as it's ever been. The disparity between PC and console players has been something that's depressed a lot of people for years on end now, and it's about time that changed. Crossplay is the way to do it. Not only bringing the community together, but also guaranteeing that content comes out at the same time on every platform at any given time. And that's what we need. As a community of console players that have been given the short end of the stick far too many times over the last decade, it's about time for that to change. And I feel quite confident that Overkill are putting the steps in to make that happen. I just hope they follow through with them. I really do. This one I'm sliding in as a bit of a discussion because I want to know what you all think. We know some information here and I want to talk about it in a little bit of detail. Obviously, as we all know, Payday 3 is a game that's going to release. Wow, shocker. When it does, I presume it's going to have a AAA price tag at $60, $70. I believe Overkill are probably going to try and push for that. It depends on the size of the game because obviously Payday 2 never really reached that price tag. The question that follows after that is the DLC plan and the payment model that will come out of it. 
how will post-launch content be handled in Payday 2? Well, according to Starbreeze's company presentation and some information provided by Starbreeze's CEO, both of which I'll put on screen now, there is an emphasis that the game will have a games-as-a-service model just like Payday 2 has. And you might be saying right now, well, Troy, what is a games-as-a-service model? What does that mean? Basically, what it means is that the game is continually generating money after launch via either additional DLC packs or microtransactions. It means that the launch of the game and buying the actual copies of the game is not the only income source the company will get. In fact, quite often, it becomes the less valuable one, as you make more money often from the DLCs and the microtransactions. For example, think about Destiny 2. Ignoring the fact that the base game is free to play now, Destiny 2 initially launched as a full $60 AAA game. After that, expansions came out that cost more money to keep the game going and to have more constant content coming out to fund the developers and make more money for the company. Payday 2 has done a very similar thing. Since the game came out, you've got constant DLC packs releasing and that's what's helping fund Overkill to keep making more content. The same applies to Payday 3. In fact, when the co-publishing deal was signed with Koch Media, one point in that agreement agreed that post-launch content would be coming out for Payday 3 for at least the first 18 months. So whenever the game releases, for the next year and a half at least, there will be more post-launch content, be it heists, characters, weapons, whatever it might be. The thing we don't know right now though is if they'll handle it the same way as Payday 2 or try and mix it up. Because there are two big options that different games choose at different times. One option is pay DLC. You release DLC everyone has to pay for to get access to, and that's how you fund the company. On the other side of the coin, you've then got microtransactions. Every piece of content you release for the game as expansion, as add-on content, is free, be it maps, characters, all that stuff, yet again, all free, but there are microtransactions in the game, cosmetics, whatever it might be, and the sales from those are what end up funding the free content that we get. In other words, how Call of Duty works now, they ditch the season pass model, all the content comes out for free, because the money they're making from the microtransactions, from the card points and the bundles and the operators and all that, are what are funding the company and allowing more content to be made. So what I'd actually like to know is what you all think. Which model do you prefer? Do you want just paid DLC coming out after launch? Or do you want cosmetic microtransactions that go alongside free content being added on a regular basis? Which one do you prefer? Let me know. To wrap it all up with my final solid chapter, let's discuss the release date. Payday 3 first started off being pinned as a release date between 2022 and 2023. When the publishing agreement with Koch Media was announced, it was moved to just specifically 2023. I have, however, seen something else at the company presentation that might suggest that that's wrong as well, because they have put a new window up planning how they're going to release Payday 3 and the content afterwards for Starbreeze Studios as a whole. It's called their game plan. And if you look at it, for 2022, you've got the securing of Payday 3 development and its quality, continuing to monetize Payday 2 through its DLC, and so on and so forth. But then you've got a window for 2023 to 2024, and within that is the launch of Payday 3 and the LTV creation. LTV being lifetime value, releasing something basically that is going to make you profit for a long period of time after the game releases. That's some business speak for you. Now, there's two ways to look at this. First off, it could be well, Payday 3 is releasing in 2023, as we've said, and the next 18 months afterwards, going into 2024 and beyond, are what's going to be this lifetime value, creating the money and allowing Starbreeze to make more money off of Payday 3. On the other hand of the coin, you could argue that this is a way of them covering their backside. If they realise Payday 3 needs more time to develop and 2023 is too soon for the game to release, they could shove it back to 2024 within their plan here and make it work. The only thing that would stop that is if there's some kind of discrepancy in the contract with Koch Media. It could be when they sign that publishing deal, Koch have said, you've got to release it in 2023. I haven't seen the agreement. I don't know for sure, but it looks to me like the way this game plan is done suggests that the door could be open that if Overkill needs to delay the game by another year, they could do, which I like. I want it to be more open because if they need more time to make this game as perfect as possible, they should use it. We all know what happened with Overkill's The Walking Dead when they had to stick to deadlines. I mean, I know that's a completely different situation because hopefully with Payday 3, they won't need to switch engines in the last year of development and have to restart from the ground up. That would be very awkward, but I want them to have as much time as they want. This is their big thing. They want everyone to be playing Payday 3 for many years to come because a lot of us now, we've played Payday 2 for a long time and we're quite ready for a change. Will it release in 2023? Will it release in 2024? We don't know for sure. I honestly don't know. I think 2023 is still feasible, but I like that there's still a backup for 2024, provided it fits into the contract with Koch Media. To wrap up the video, I want to talk about some more general thoughts from Payday 3 and key bits of information to sum up everything we've talked about and give you the gist of everything we've discussed. So first off, let's put this graphic on screen, which is how Starbreeze sum up Payday 3 in their company presentation. So here are the key facts. 
Development started the game in October 2019, so they're building the actual game up. It's using the Unreal Game Engine, with an estimated release date of 2023. There's a co-publishing deal with Koch Media, while the IP is developed and owned by Starbreeze, and once the game launches, they'll have a games as a service model or gas model, adding new content long after the release. They will also have up to 50 million euros investment to allow continuous content and marketing 18 months after release, which is a good thing. You want Payday 3 to be constantly being pushed out for new content, constantly being advertised, and constantly drawing new people in to play the game, and that's the way to do it. Starbreeze have also put in a different slide that they're on a mission to make the Payday brand a transmedia franchise. You can see that under the And Tomorrow section of that infographic. A lot more information to read there if you want to have a little look through at what Starbreeze's plans are, but it's very clear to me that with Payday 3 launching, they want a brand that stretches across all different mediums. They want it to be a video game, and they want it to expand beyond that. What does that mean? Well, I really, really want that live action content. A lot of us have loved the live action stuff they've done for trailers and the web series, and we all know that's one of the things that makes the Payday franchise very unique. They're one of the only only game companies these days, if not the only, I don't know, don't quote me on it, that does full live action promotion with their content. Granted, they've not done it in a while, but we know they've done lots of it in the past and could easily do it again. Additionally, a couple of other things to talk about. For one thing, PC specs have not been stated yet. That probably should be obvious, but that was an answer on the AMA that I want to show you all. PC specs will be provided much closer to release. On top of that, someone asked about making the violence more gorish in Payday 3, and Almi replied saying that the tonality of Payday 3 and the way the game feels, looks, behaves is for a different time and a different conversation. So we'll get more information on that later down the line. We'll see how that develops. And finally, they were also asked about the potential of crossovers in Payday 3 like they've done with Payday 2 two for all sorts of different things and the reply they got from Overkill was they are trying to make Payday 3 the best of the series, we will see what the future holds. In other words, crossovers are fairly likely, I think we can all see that coming. Payday 2 was so crossover heavy that I think we can imagine there'll be more in Payday 3. And that ladies and gentlemen is everything we know about Payday 3. For context, I've been recording for over 45 minutes now so I hope I've got a lot to chop out here and make this a more concise video. But there was a lot to talk about, a lot to break down and I hope you've all enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure you drop a thumbs up on it, I would greatly appreciate it and subscribe to the channel if you are new to stay up to date with future content. Thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And make sure you check out the new Payday 3 merch design at redarcherlive.com. I greatly appreciate it. And if you want to support me over on Patreon, that's about to get a huge overhaul with a bunch of new tiers and new rewards being added. So I hope that you're all excited for that. It really does mean the world to me that anyone goes over there and supports me even for as little as a pound. It makes the whole world a difference to me, I promise you. Check out the Discord at discord.gg slash redarcherlive. Check out my Twitch at twitch.tv slash redarcherlive. Twitter and Instagram at redarcherlive as well. Follow me. Keep up to date with what I'm up to. It'd be really cool to have you on board with my different platforms and all that kind of stuff. But apart from that, thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you all very soon with a brand new video. Until then, look after yourselves, stay safe and I'll see you all soon.